Sometimes life imitates art, and when I heard about this story, it reminded me immediately of a Netflix series called You. Uh, however, I think that story is based on horrors of reality, too, not necessarily vice versa. This almost sounds like somebody maybe saw the show or maybe was just following history and uh, said, I'm going to try that. Um, Nagasi Zavari, 29, arrested for his alleged involvement in the harrowing kidnapping of a woman that he then confined to a makeshift cinder block cell within his Oregon home's garage. Did you watch you on Netflix at all? No, and I'm glad I didn't. Uh, oh. Probably should have. It's good. But... It's good. There's like three or four seasons. I don't think I finished the last season. It got a little weird. But the first two seasons I say are good. It's very similar. Uh, he finds the person, uh, encages them in his makeshift uh, cell block. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's horrifying. Uh, this terrifying incident shines a spotlight in Zabari's extensive history of alleged violent acts, misdemeanors, spreading across multiple states and affecting countless lives as our uh, law enforcement and our government uh, look the other way. And I'm not blaming police officers here. It's not their fault. They have no control over who gets to be arrested and when or how long they get to be held. Uh, that's our system that's extremely broken that hasn't kept this piece of shit uh, off the streets after countless sexual assaults and other violent encounters. This person should have never been out to begin with. Judge, exactly. Judge Judy should have stomped his ass. He was on Judge Judy, too, by the way. I, for real? For real. Come on. For real. We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, according to authorities, Zavari lured the woman into captivity after posing as an undercover police officer in Seattle. He then proceeded to drive her hundreds of miles away to Kalmath Falls, Oregon, where he locked her up in what the FBI's Portland field office described as a makeshift concrete cell. In a testament to her willpower and determination to survive, the woman managed to escape, albeit with bloodied hands, after beating down the cell door. And I got to say this, if you're going to create your cinder block cell, you may want to put something on it other than like a closet door. Um, because, because you're a creepy guy and you want to keep somebody captive doesn't mean you know how to do it. I mean, there's not like, you know, you go to Home Depot and there's a create your own cell package that you can just pick up and buy. I, I mean, tell you what, I got a cinder block cell in my basement and it has a like a closet door on it. And it really needs to have a metal door. Oh, you got to upgrade that shit, man. I'm not even joking. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Uh, it's it's not a cell. It's Dude. <laughs> it's a storm shelter. Uh, that okay. is, that okay. is well, yeah, look it, at where you live. That's exactly yeah. what you should have. But it could be looked at as a cell cuz it's 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 a big room. Uh, and it's, you know, it's it's concreted walls and all that, but the door on it is just like a wooden door. And I'm like, if this is like a safe room, it really should make it a safe room. But well, anyway, yeah. but I, I, that it was built. I did not build it. Um, I'm just saying, if you're going to construct it, you, gotta, you know, don't, don't go for the cheap route uh, on the door. That's uh, kind of an important part to anything. Thank God he did though. Uh, because that allowed this woman to escape and expose this monster in a testament to her willpower and determination to survive. The woman has managed uh, to escape uh, albeit with bloodstained hands and beating down that door, like I said. Um, according to the complaint, this woman was kidnapped, chained, sexually assaulted, and locked in a cinder block cell. Her quick thinking and will to survive may have saved other women from a similar nightmare. Uh, delving into Zavar to, uh, Zavari's past, which you need to do to try and figure these people out, we're going to uncover a series of alarming incidents that paint a portrait of a man with a penchant for violence and manipulation, in July of 2020, uh, Alisa Westfalls, Barry's wife, detailed in a request for a protective order his alleged violent action towards her and her two children. Westfall stated, he screams at the kids and me, threatens me verbally, financially and mentally abusive to us all. She also shared that Zavari took control of her finances, took her phone and even escalated violence when she attempted to involve the police. However, the protective order was temporarily granted, requiring Zavari to maintain a 100-yard distance from Westfall and their children. Despite the evidence, the order was mysteriously dismissed in September of 2020 with no recorded reasoning. What? Now, I don't know how these sort of things happen because they need to, but how these things just get dismissed, I don't know. I mean, likely what happened here is she went in and got rid of the order 
because they stayed together. Moreover, prior to his Oregon arrest, Savari's reputation was far from clean. He's been associated with previous assault accusations, eviction proceedings, and has lived in numerous states since 2016, making his track record complex and concerning. Court records have uncovered multiple complaints against him, hinting at a pattern of abusive behavior. You think? I'm shocked. In California, Zavari, uh, who went under multiple aliases, including Justin Kasawi, Justin Joshua Hitch, and Samika Zavari, faced a restraining order filed by a woman accusing him of domestic violence, as reported by NBC News. The woman claimed he had threatened and physically abused her and her children. Records from Colorado paint a similar picture under the name Justin Kasawi. He was reportedly accused of physical assault, leading to the insurance of uh, an arrest warrant. Uh, uh, Ab uh, Abishik Kander, a previous landlord from Vancouver, Washington, described his problematic tendencies. Zabari had allegedly defaulted on rent for half a year, engaged <laughs> in illegal subletting, and even purportedly threatened neighbors. Reflecting on his experiences with Zabari, Kander didn't mince his words. He's a horrible person. He deserves to go to jail. Zabari's uh, intricate web of uh, deception extends further than the aliases, though. Investigators suspect that he utilized various tactics to control his victims, including pe uh, pretending to be law enforcement officers, drugging their drinks, seeking out sex workers only to assault them. Uh, disturbingly, some assaults might have been filmed under the guise of consensual activities. Uh, evidence gathered from Zabari's Klamath Falls residence indicated meticulous planning on his part. A note titled Operation Takeover including instructions such as leave phone at home and guidelines for selecting potential victims. Moreover, sketches of what seemed to be an underground structure with details like foam insulation and waterproof concrete further hinted at his sinister intentions. Given the breadth of his alleged offenses, authorities are urging any potential victims across the states he's resided in, which include California, Washington, Oregon, Colorado, Utah, Florida, New York, New Jersey, Alabama, and Nevada to step forward. Zabari's case underscores the importance of vigilance, both in personal safety and ensuring that justice is relentlessly pursued. This is a very, very disturbing case of what a monster is capable of doing, which is exactly what this man is. Uh, and uh, someone who does like to seek out attention because he was on Judge Judy with that uh, very wife that we talked about earlier who was also a resident of the home at the time of the cell going up in the garage and someone being in the cell in the garage. So I'm looking at him um, on Judge Judy, and yeah. he looks he looks like somebody that you would maybe just run into at a coffee shop. He stops in, he's wearing a suit, you know, he's just getting a latte, heading out the door. And then you see the picture of, of him after being arrested. Something has changed. Yeah. And I just, I wonder what happens to you that you just jump off that cliff that you go, ah, oh, fuck it. This is what I'm going to do. The amount of planning that goes, that he clearly did to make this cell in his mm -hmm. garage uh, and to plan and plot out how you're going to, I mean, it just, it shows just such a level of depravity and and just evil behavior. This is not just a, and I, and I would use the word just uh, lightly. It's obviously far more serious. It's not just you kidnapped somebody, which in itself is fucking horrible. He planned this. He planned not only to kidnap, but to keep and control and have a person in his cell. It wasn't just yeah. rape and kill. And obviously that's horrible in itself, but it was rape and hold and keep as almost a slave uh, if you will, or a captive. Uh, and I, bastard. and you know what I do question? I very much do question the wife uh, because number one, both of them went on judge Judy together. Uh, you can watch the video of that. It is up. Uh, and I mean, it's a very much an attention grabbing thing uh, without a doubt. Uh, and I, I just, I, I watched some of the video that they show in there. It almost seems a little bit staged in terms of what he claims that he was assaulted. Um, I don't know. I, I I just think there's more to this, and I I don't necessarily know that he was alone in this, and I'm not saying that mm -hmm. she was, but I'm at the very minimum, I'm saying there's no way in hell she was not aware there was a cell in that fucking garage. 
And she what, had to know something or, well, you know, that he was being protective of that area or, you know, people can't come over that kind of thing, you the, know? And, and the, the argument of, and I make it all the time, of, well, we're in an abusive situation. Sometimes you don't realize it. I'm sorry. There is a line at some point where you are becoming complicit with the abuser uh, and, and also helping them along if you're not going to do anything. Yeah. And, yeah, and absolutely. And this, I do very much wonder about if there was a level of complicity here. I don't know, but I'm sure they're looking into all of the details and every inch of his past. Uh, and I just hope to God those kids are really not in the custody of either of them right now until they can narrow this shit down uh, and figure out what exactly was going on. I hope uh, for the sake of those kids that, that the mom was not complicit in this uh, because they've, you know, dad's already gone. But uh, if, if she is, then those kids are even more out of luck. But absolutely, I, I, I do hope it's, it's just pure ignorance. Uh, and maybe it was something where, you know, you're in the abusive situation, but to it, like I said, the same point, you're complicit at a certain point if you know your husband has a cell in the garage with a random woman in it. And if you're going to bed at night going, I'm too afraid to tell because he's going to hurt me, that's not abuse anymore. That's complicity uh, in, in something like that. Because if you can show that there's a cell in your garage and there's someone in it, he ain't going to hurt you anymore. He's going away. <laughs> this isn't one of those For calls. For a very long time. This isn't one of those calls where they're just going to be like, nah, I don't know about that. Uh, this is very much a no. Uh, you need to do something about this. So we're going to keep following this one for you. It's it's dark. I, I, I'm i interested to hear what he's going to plead because uh, that has not occurred yet. And with the amount of damning evidence, uh, you hope for a I'm, I'm guilty a plea. But I don't know. He seems to be a bit of a narcissist. So my guess is going to be it wasn't me. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.